So to be like God, you have to have this habit of turning negatives into positives, of seeing the silver lining. People like to say the silver lining. What does that mean, the silver lining? It means a positive aspect in an otherwise negative situation. It means to see an advantage that comes from a difficult or unpleasant situation. Everyone say silver lining. lining. Okay, that's not a biblical word, but I'm going to show you it's exactly biblical. Go with me to Isaiah 45. A lot of you know Isaiah 45. I'm not going to expound on the first few verses. Isaiah 45 is very famous because it coincides with president number 45. All right? So that's, that's been well preached. Uh, verse 3. Verse 3. I will give you... This is really one of the secrets of the Bible. One of the great, great secrets of the Bible. Answers many, many things. God says... Can you read it together with me in the New King James? One, two, three. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I, the Lord, who call you by your name, am the God of Israel. What a strange thing, don't you think? God says, I'll give you treasures in bright, beautiful places. (laughs) No, that's what we thought. That's what we thought, right? When the, when the rain stops and the sun shine, and then we'll see a rainbow pointing to a pot of gold, and that will be God. That's what the world thinks. But he says, no, I'll give you treasures of darkness, and I'll give you riches in secret places. Hey, you know what? Not everybody's going to find the secret place. Not everyone is going to get rich from something he has put in the secret place. Not everyone is going to find the treasure that's in the dark place because they see the darkness and they go, dark, dark, dark. Dark, dark, dark. Oh, it's all dark here. Well, that's very immature spiritually. Any question? Any thought? Elmer? Yeah. I don't have a a quick, easy answer. You're asking me, the question is, why are Christians so negative? I mean, you go on social media and you've never met a more negative bunch of people than Christians who think they know the Bible and misapply it and just try to destroy and hurt other people. It's the strangest thing because our God turns bad things for good. So why would you be a Christian who turns bad things worse? It it doesn't make sense to me. But if I were to give you like off-the-cuff answer, I think that our culture is to blame. Our culture is Greek culture. We've taken Greek culture and replaced it with biblical culture. We just assume, you know, and and this is the thing with, okay, let me me get on the racism stuff for a second because you got Black Lives Matter and you got all this um, affirmative action, they call it, and and, uh, they're going to give money to uh, businesses not owned by whites, Biden said. Right? As long as it's not owned by whites, then the coronavirus funds will come. If it's owned by whites, forget it. And you know me. I've stated, I said, this, all this stuff is just racism in another form. You're just reversing the racism. That's not a solution. You know, ra- racism to a different group is not the solution to racism. Um, but if I were to, to sympathize, if I could just put myself in the shoe for a little bit, right? They've suffered and they've had disadvantages and, okay, let's, let's, let's think about that. It, it would be true if you could humor the other side, if you could humor the other side. There are some facts that Europeans started both world wars. It would be a fact that Europeans have uh, gone on a global colonialization uh, adventure all throughout the world, did not leave anybody untouched. Whereas nobody else did that. Asians did not invade Ireland. Africans did not invade Hong Kong. You know, so there are some facts there, correct? And I would see the treasure in that. I would see the treasure in the darkness instead of complaining and griping and saying we're victims. That's what I disagree with. 
Okay, bad stuff has happened, but to say you're a victim and now you need reparation and you need to be treated, like, how do we even know, like, you're, which of my forefather oppressed which of your forefather? And, like, how much genetic material qualifies you to be on the victim side versus the perpetrator side? You know, I'm 50% I'm Scottish Irish, I'm 50% Thai Chinese. So what, so what do I get? You know, who oppressed who? Right? So I'm not into that. But there is something to it. You can't just say there's nothing to it. There is something to the fact that Europeans start both world wars. Europeans go and colonize everybody. And then I say, well, what's the treasure? I would say, well, look, you, you look at countries like Malaysia, now speaks English. The reason we welcome Malaysians into Australia is because it's an easy assimilation. Malaysians were a part of the British colony, speak, they, many of them should speak English, and then many of them probably heard the gospel because of the days of colonialization. So God took a bad thing and turned it for good. So I'd say, stop being a victim and see the good side of it. But there are people who just, they won't see the good side. And they'll say, well, why do white people always do this? And the reason white people do this, to be honest, to be straight, is white people assume that we're superior. You have to accept that a lot of the motivation behind what you do is that you believe you're superior. And the example that I, I gave long time ago was we had this guy, Andrew Chan, that was stuck in a prison for being, uh, what, a drug mule or drug donkey in Indonesia. And what do we say? We say, Indonesians, how dare you exercise your sovereign power and judge one of our citizens. Um, and we disagree with capital punishment. Because all Australians, it seems, disagree with guns and capital punishment. That seems to be our main stance. You know, I'd say 90% of Australians I meet are that way. Um, and, and we said, Indonesians, stuff you. How can you do that? Give us back our citizen. And the moment Australians said that, you sign his death sentence. Because it's so offensive. Now, we would never imagine that Indonesia would call us and say, hey, you arrested a bunch of people that are Indonesians. And you're treating them very lightly. I heard they went to your magistrate court, got a slap on the wrist, did community service, and they're out. We demand that you cut his head off, at least cut the hand off. And we'd say, stuff you, Indonesia. Who are you to tell us what to do? You see, now, we immediately would feel that. That's not our culture, mate. But white people do it to other cultures all the time. Say, well, China should act this way. Indonesia should act this way. In fact, white people are the only group of people that do that to the whole world. Tell everybody else. You notice the whole world doesn't say anything? Not even the Russians. So when I say white people, I really actually mean usually Europeans. I don't include the Russians. I don't include Americans often don't do it, but underlying there is that assumption that it's our right to tell you what to do. And you know, Guatemala, Honduras, everybody. The CIA just said, we don't like your government and we like your bananas. And so we're going to go and replace your government. And so that, those are called the banana republics. The, the CIA went in and overthrew government after government that they just disagreed with or they couldn't get a good business deal for their bananas, right? And so, again, white people may not necessarily include Hispanics and Latinos. It is a particular kind of this European superiority philosophy, and it, it seems to come out of, you know, what name the colonies. It comes out of the British, it comes out of the French, it comes out of the Germans. Um, I guess the Spanish and Portuguese went to Latin America and the Philippines. But there, there's so much of that assumption that our way is superior. And so then, um, when you have that, and that's what you grow up with, when you become Christian, you become very, you know, in a way, spiritually arrogant. Very easy to argue, you know, you're wrong. Well, you're, I, don't, I don't like the way that your church does this. I don't like, and this is my right to say it, right? But 
many, many other cultures would not um, live Christianity in that way. So you'll find that Christians who are Western trained become easy to criticize, easy to judge, easy to be negative because you'd only judge if you think you're right. Why would you judge if you think you're wrong? There's an assumption there. I'm right, mate. I'm right to tell Indonesia where to go. How dare you treat Andrew Chen that way? And I just knew at the moment you did that, I just thought, well, you, you made him lose face. You disrespected the, their culture and their government and their sovereignty. Andrew Chan's dead. And you know what happened? You know what happened? The country that said nothing got their citizen back quietly. Philippines. Because the way you do, if you, if you didn't think you were superior, the way you would do is you would go quietly through the back door to Indonesia and you'd say, uh, Philippine calling. Sorry, ah, uh, sorry, we have a troublemaker there in your country. Could we just, you mind, we just get her back? Sorry, huh? Eh? It's a troublemaker. Sorry to disturb you. And Indonesia would say, well, it makes us look very good. We build some credits with the Philippines. Take her. You respect me, I respect you back. But Australians, well, not all Australians are this way, but the stupid leaders of Australia, killed him. Killed Andrew Chan. Killed one of our citizens because of the assumption that we can just go and criticize other people and, and talk back and just, it's my opinion. No, you can't always do that. You will, sometimes, you will pay a dear price doing that. So you don't get to mouth off all the time when you're living in other countries. But in the Western world, people mouth off. I just, it happened to me, I was just driving, I had to do a, you know sometimes you have to do a U-turn in the middle of a street, and there's a car like, I mean he's, literally he's, 50 cars away from me. He's 50 car lengths away from me. And I'm driving a big van with four kids in the, in the, in the van. So I'm just, I just, I don't want to rush it. And so I just, I'm doing it slowly. And the guy sees me from a kilometer away. And he had to, as soon as he got near me, he had to honk. I'm sure he gave me the middle finger. I didn't even look. But this, all this, it was just like, it's my right, mate. It's like, it's my street. I don't have to share it. And people do that. People in the Western world do that. Just say, you're wrong, mate. How dare you? Make a U-turn. And I'm thinking, you never made a U-turn on a street before? Are you kidding me? But in the Western world, you can just do that to people. In any other place, you do that in Russia, in Thailand, and probably in many places in China, you will not get home. You will not get home. I'm not joking. You will not get home. Nobody has a right to treat even a stranger that way because we have to live with one another. We have to get along with one another. But the Western world is not, not taught that. The Western world is, I have my right. It's my right to say it. Now what's the consequence of saying it? I don't care, it's my right to say it. So then it produces very negative, critical, judgmental Christians. But it's also produced very intellectual Christians, wonderfully thoughtful Christians. It kind of goes together. And it goes with the war. Because if you think you're superior and you're right, then you think, well, why can't I invade France? Why can't France speak German? And they did it. Why can't Poland speak German? Germans are cleaner, stronger, healthier, smarter. That's literally how they thought. We're better, so we're going to go get the dumb Slavs and the dumb Eastern Europeans. They're going to live under our perfect system. That's where we're, that's where we're one and two, really. So, so, so that's going to come up again. It's never going to end. It's, it's ingrained. Only when you become Christian, that kind of thing, you, you sometimes will assess and say, hey, is this really from Jesus or is this just my cultural upbringing? And do I want to keep going this way or do I want to, you know, be the change? And I have a lot of hope for Australia because America was, was I know America very well, living there 10 years in different states. And America was the Wild West. When they say the Wild West, that's no joke. The Wild West was uncouth, rude. They'll shoot you, at, you know, for offending them, taking, dishonoring them. And yet America became a country that's very, very polite until recently. Very polite. And I, I've heard Australians who go there just say, wow, what a, what a difference. As soon as they come back to Australia, they say, wow, it's, the politeness level has changed. So the Christianity in America really made everyone very used to be kind and polite to each other. 
And I really want Australia to be more like this, you know, to think about each other. We have to share road space. We have to share everything. And generally, the, the more land you have, the more rude you can be. That's what I've found. So I, I lived in France. I lived in Spain. I lived in England. I lived in a lot of places. The more land you have in France, the more rude and uncouth the people are. The denser the, 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 the place gets, the more they have to be cultured. They would, they'll say we're high cultured. We have certain things that we have to etiquette. Why? Because the more tight the space, the more you have to be now aware, how loud am I? How am I affecting other people? So generally, generally speaking, this doesn't always hold true. It does not hold true in Hong Kong at all. I don't know what happened. Very tight space and everyone's rude at each other and they smoke in your face and spit. But generally speaking, it's all very broad brush. You will find that as there's more and more people, people have to become more and more polite. And the Christianity would be the catalyst to bring that kind of culture. So I hope Christians become the, the, the leading force to make Australia more and more Christian and we treat each other as Christians.